what we're looking at here is a certificate of title of an original owner, 65 Monza, that this gentleman bought brand new in 1965. Right. And except for it being stolen 10 years later and recovered, minus wheels, tires, hubcaps, and bicycle and tools. And battery. And the battery. It's pretty much been in your hands for 41, 50, 50, 50, 50 it's true. Years. 51 years. And why would you have chosen a Corvair when you could have had a Malibu SS with a 327 or an Impala? Yeah, you know, this wasn't the first car I bought in 1965. My mm -hmm. first car was a 1965 Plymouth Fury. Uh -huh. My father had a Plymouth. And uh, I discovered uh, within a few days after we had it that the tires were about one third worn out, and then we discovered the manufacture, the delivery date, and it was about nine months before. So I said, I don't want this car, I want a Corvair, because at Brandeis, uh, that was where I saw the first late model Corvair. Mm -hmm. uh, very attractive woman. I can't tell you who she is because someone would know who she is if I mentioned her name, because she's from a famous family. And I said to myself, what kind of car is that? I've never seen anything like that. And so it was the best looking car on the road. So you couldn't get the best looking woman to come home with you, but you can get the best looking car, get rid of this junk fury that was already delivered to somebody else. I couldn't, I and, couldn't even consider getting the woman And to come home with a crocus yellow Monza Power Glide. Beautiful car. At Stanford Medical School, 10% mm -hmm. of, of my class had Corvairs. 10%? 10%. It was so, a small class, 65, but there were seven Corvairs. Really? And a variety of earlies, lates, automatics, uh, four speeds? Yes, there were four lates and three earlies. Wow. Good mix. I'm the first and only owner of this 1965 Monza Coupe. It was purchased at Blauschild. Blauschild. Blauschild Chevrolet in Shaker Heights on August 25th, 1965. The car was once stolen in St. Louis, Missouri. It was recovered two days later, a little bit lighter. How many miles did they put on it? Did you keep track of it? No, probably not. They just drove it from where I had it to the and another took, part of the city. And took what they needed? What they want and left it. And it spent a couple years in California. You ordered the bumper guards, the overriders. Oh, the bumper guards were added when I had it to mm -hmm. the store. It's got the day-night mirror, which means it probably has the comfort and convenience group, which comprises the tinted windshield, I think, or no. was it? That was 66. No tinted windshield. No tinted windshield. No. Two-speed wiper washer. Clock. Yes. No clock. The clock was added. Oh, the clock was added when you had it restored. It's got map pockets, which is a 65 only option, but Clark's Corvair will add them to any Corvair you want. And it's got 170,000 miles. And it was built to last. It was. At least if you took care of it the way I did. Chicagoland Corvair, Corvair enthusiast. Did you order the 110? Did you order this car or was no. it was on the lot? It was on the lot. It was pretty late, August 25th, so mm -hmm. you know, they were about to, to move on to the next, uh, to 66. Spring ring battery cables, and this engine looks great. You've got the correct washer under the battery cable where it belongs. Don't know why GM did it that way, but that's the way they did it. Uh, I just recently had this apart because I changed the top cover gaskets. Mm -hmm. So if there are mistakes, I've made them. <laughs> you got here. You drove it here. It's a Willow Run car yeah. and it looks really good and it's not rusted at all. It's got an Archer kit, which I think is Radio Shack. Yeah. Deluxe Capacitive Discharge Ignition Kit. Oh, I built that in the 60s. Radio Shack, Fort Worth, Texas, 76107. It's really a, a Delta Mark uh, 2 mm -hmm. B or something like that. I recall that now. You're bringing back memories from years and years ago. It's been radio the shack just uh, relabeled it. Yeah, it's a Delta. Mm -hmm. I remember the Delta Mark 2. How does it look underneath? Stick our finger in the drain hole and it's clear. There's a drain hole back there for the flush and dry rockers and you want to make sure it's clear. A lot of Corvairs are dripping and I stick my finger in that drain hole and it's packed full of mud. Oh. 65 was the first year for flush and dry rockers. The air comes in here, runs down through the rocker. When I started restoring the car, mm -hmm. I found that the dealership, when they applied the undercoating, mm -hmm. covered over that 
the square drain hole completely. I had no idea there was a hole here. Well, there's a few guys here. that One's got a beautiful 65 Monza convertible with a million dollar paint job and I stuck my finger in the hole and as you can see water drips out of it like it's supposed to and this one is totally 100% clear. That one has dirt in it? Nope, well, tiny bit. Some of them are packed full. The rocker is full of leaf debris. They should have put a screen here. Yeah. Packed full of leaf debris. So the entire rocker stays wet and rusts away even after the rain has long stopped. Sure. Thank you for showing us your brand new Monza. You're very welcome. 51 years later. You're very welcome.